Among Hispanic and Latino Americans, does living your life in Spanish mean that you have a better sex life? Language is the way that humans express our thoughts and experiences. But could the language that you speak actually affect those thoughts and experiences that you have? There is evidence that linguistic differences can actually evolve into cognitive differences. The language that you speak might result in different perceptions of things like color, gender, time, size, and even abstract things such as intentions and blame. Could, uh, could your sex life also be affected by the language that you speak? The study that I'm going to present today assessed language dominance and sexual behaviors among Hispanic and Latino Americans. Language dominance just refers to the language that you use in your day-to-day -day life. The data from this study was taken from the 2012 National Survey of Sexual Health Behaviors. Over 3,000 individuals took the survey, but only the 432 individuals who identified as Hispanic or Latino uh, were included in the analysis. Participants were further broken up by gender and by language dominance. English dominant, bilingual, or Spanish dominant. 88% were heterosexual, 91.7% lived in a metropolitan area, and 44.9% had a child under the age of 18 living in their household. Individuals were asked to account their last sexual encounter. They were asked to rate their sexual desire and sexual pleasure as either low to moderate or high. They were also asked about their orgasms. They could either respond, no, I had no orgasms, or I had one or more orgasms. Participants were also asked to um, indicate whether they had in engaged in a list of sexual behaviors of their last sexual encounter. These behaviors included vaginal sex, anal sex, oral sex, partnered masturbation, no, solo masturbation, partnered masturbation, genital rubbing, uh, massaging, cuddling, and nipple and breast stimulation. <laughs> On to the results. Um, I will note that I did not include the results for behaviors that were very similar across all groups. When asked to rate their sexual desire as either low to moderate or high, the difference in percent between Spanish dominant women and English dominant women who responded high was 4.9%. When asked to rate their sexual pleasure as either low to moderate or high, the difference in percent of, between Spanish dominant women and English dominant women who responded high was 26.3%. When asked if they had orgasmed at their last sexual encounter, the difference in percent between Spanish dominant women and English dominant women who responded, yes, I orgasmed one or more times, was 21.9%. When asked if they had anal sex at their last sexual encounter, the difference in percent between Spanish dominant women and English dominant women who responded, yes, I had had anal sex, was 11.3%. When asked if they had given oral at their last sexual encounter, the difference in percent between bilingual women and English dominant women who responded yes was 14%. When asked if they had received oral at their last sexual encounter, the difference in percent between Spanish dominant women and English dominant women who responded yes was 9.5%. When asked if they had engaged in genital rubbing at their last sexual encounter, the difference in percent between Spanish dominant women and English dominant women who responded yes was 7.3%. When asked if they had engaged in massaging at their last sexual encounter, the difference in percent between English dominant women and bilingual women who responded yes was 12.3%, where between English dominant women and Spanish dominant women, it was 6.7%. When asked if they had engaged in cuddling at their last sexual encounter, the difference in percent between the Spanish dominant women who responded yes and the English dominant women who responded yes was 22.6%. Now on to the men. When asked to rate their sexual desire as either low to moderate or high, the difference in percent between bilingual men and English dominant men who responded high was 2.3%. When asked to rate their sexual pleasure as either low to moderate or high, the difference between bilingual men and English dominant men who responded high was 12%. When asked to if they had had orgasms at their last sexual encounter. The difference between Spanish dominant men who responded yes and English dominant men who responded yes was 
When asked if they had engaged in anal sex at their last sexual encounter, the difference in Spanish dominant men and English dominant men who responded yes was 10.4%. When asked if they had given oral sex at their last sexual encounter, the difference between English dominant men and bilingual men who responded yes was 9.8%, while the difference between um, English dominant men and Spanish dominant men was 9.5%. When asked if they had received oral in their last sexual encounter, the difference between bilingual men and English dominant men who responded yes was 17%. When asked if they had engaged in genital rubbing at their last sexual encounter, the difference between Spanish dominant men and English dominant men was 13%. When asked if they had engaged in massaging at their last sexual encounter, the difference between English dominant men and bilingual men was 16.3%, where it was 20.6% between English dominant men and Spanish dominant men. When asked if they had engaged in cuddling at their last sexual encounter, the difference between Spanish dominant men who answered yes and English dominant men who answered yes was 12.4%. That was a lot of information. To summarize, among individuals who spoke Spanish at least half the time during their everyday lives, there was a higher incidence of reporting high sexual desire, high sexual pleasure, and one or more orgasms. Individuals were also more likely to have engaged in genital rubbing, uh, cuddling, and anal sex. Oral sex was a little more complicated. Um, those, uh, a higher percent of individuals who spoke Spanish were more likely to have given oral sex um, it, for the men, and, but for the English men, they had a higher percent of giving oral sex. Um, among English-speaking individuals, massaging was more common in their past sexual encounter. There were a lot of limitations in the study. First, there were two versions of the survey. Differences in wording or phrases used to describe sexual behaviors could have predisposed individuals to answer in a certain way on one survey and not on the other. Next, even though all individuals identified as Hispanic and Latino and lived in the United States, there were likely lots of different subgroups and subcultures within this. The survey did not ask how long individuals had lived in the United States or if they identified with a specific culture or country of origin. Next, the authors did not attempt to control for age, which was information that was readily available to them as part of the survey. Finally, you might have noticed that I've been using the word percent and trying not to use any other words. This is because the authors did not perform a single statistical test on the results. Also, what is this low to moderate versus high business? I think that we could ask the question in a better way. Regardless, these are interesting results, even with these limitations. What could be causing them? Uh, could it be that the concept of sexual pleasure causes individuals to act differently in their last sexual encounter? Could it be that there are different norms, beliefs, expectations about what should happen during a sexual encounter? Is dirty talk just better in Spanish? <laughs> Further work is required to both clarify and to confirm these results. But it could be possible that among Hispanic Latino Americans, living your life in Spanish leads to a more varied and more pleasurable sex life. Thank you.